Simon Berger, better known as T. Rowe, was a master drummer and an international performer. T. Rowe was born in, in Haiti, probably in the 1910s. Documentation of his life before his rise to fame as a stage drummer has not emerged so far. In 1915, the United States invaded Haiti and occupied until 1934. Tiwaro probably grew up in the shadow of foreign soldiers patrolling his neighborhood. Racial discrimination on the part of the occupying forces was rampant and sometimes violent, and it used Haiti's African culture as justification. Haitians fought back with a cultural movement that would honor Haiti's African heritage as a powerful means of resistance. The cultural resistance movement had an impact on the performing arts. Around 1939, pianist and composer Lina Maton Blanchet introduced Haitian folk songs into the repertory of a youth choir she directed. And choir member Jean-Léon Destinet brought drumming and dance into the mix. The company became a model. By the late 40s, many companies were performing folklore, and T. Rowe's name came into prominence. African-American jazz drummer Max Roach reported the earliest known public performance by T. Rowe. Roach claimed that he saw T. Rowe at the 1939-1940 World's Fair in New York City. The flag of Haiti flew outside the Pan American building at the fair, so we might guess that Haiti sent the drummer to represent the country. In 1939, this would have been an extraordinary achievement for a traditional drummer. Roach traveled to Haiti in the late 40s just to study with T. Rowe, and he incorporated certain elements of what he learned into his own music. T. Rowe became Haiti's best-known drummer. In the 1950s, he played three nights a week at the National Theater. Liner notes to more than one dozen LP albums that came out over the next decades, some centered exclusively on T. Rowe and some featuring live performances, tell us that he played for choreographer Jean-Léon Destinet and with the popular orchestra leader Issa El Saye. The 2000, 2008 documentary by Haitian filmmaker Franz Voltaire included some very rare and very fleeting footage of T. Rowe at his drum. In 1980, the jazz saxophonist Archie Shepp from the United States invited T. Rowe to record for an album by a European combo in Frankfurt, Germany. But T. Rowe died just prior to the recording sessions. The album was made, and Shep titled the final track for T. Rowe. T. Rowe selected his materials from the Afro-Haitian repertory. He distinguished himself as a soloist, fusing all three functions of the conventional three-drum ensemble on one drum head, and he played with hands only, choosing not to use sticks. 
His exploitation of total cap possibilities captivated Max Roach and might have influenced the jazz artist's own experiments with tone. Roach noted that TRO taught with a partition between teacher and student so that the student had only the sound to follow. His style was rhapsodic, characterized by sudden changes in meter and tempo. The drumming of TRO was dramatic, virtuosic. Raymond Tiwaro Balagieux apparently died in 1980, an estimate based on reports around the German recording. Documentation of the exact date, the place of his passing, and cause of death have not yet come to light for the general public. His work, nonetheless, paved the way for the professional careers of succeeding Haitian drummers, among them Alphonse Sambé, Louis Celestin, Lenore Fortuné, also known as Azor, Prisoner Augustin, Ticalap, Louis Leslie Marcelin, known as Samba Zao, and Jean Raymond Giglio, also known as Samba Kebiesu. Tiwowo was a pioneer and one of Haiti's national treasures. <laughs> 